All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Outlander Cast. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Sing me a song of a last that is gone. Say, could at last be I? Mary of soul, she sailed on a day. My name is Blake, and oh my goodness, all of the reactions to this, to, to this debacle that is season 7B release window. Like, it, it's a lot. It go, it spans the <laughs> total, the, imagine a spectrum mm-hmm. of responses that one could make yes. or one could have, yes, and then double it. And then you'll see the amount of responses and the wide range, the cornucopia, mm, if you will, yes. of responses that I think the fandom, well, no, the fandom is 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 giving to. You know, the Outlander fandom is diverse and passionate, if not nothing else. So we've got sometimes all our a little feels. over the top. We've got all our feels <laughs> and all our information. Um, we do want to note that in the course of us getting this podcast episode up and running on Monday, March twenty fifth. Outlander and Stars actually also dropped, what, 30 minutes ago, a post on social media talking about season eight being in production. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe we can share a few ideas on that as well while we're here for that. Yeah, sure. I'm in. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Awesome. All right. So this episode is part two of two podcasts. The initial one where Blake and my own reactions to how Outlander and the team at Stars announced the release time frame of says season 7B. And we did not have enough time to share a lot of the feedback that those of you who are so wonderful to share. So just so you know, in case it's been a while since you've listened to Outlander Cast, you can always comment on our social media and the Mary and Blake social medias. We, of course, take a lot of content from our friends at jointhenerdclan.com. That's our beautifully, wonderfully supportive Patreon group who truly keeps the lights on in our studio and helps us make sure that we can continue to create this free content. Um, so if you're interested, jointhenerdclan.com as little as two dollars a month you can really support this mom and pop podcast shop and you get a lot of cool stuff you do on top of the free content that we give yeah and then um oh i just had another oh yeah and then the other thing is the voicemail so while we're in normal season of course or for any of our other podcasts that we cover you can always go to maryandblake.com click the upper right hand corner where it says contact us and you can actually leave a voicemail so you're going to hear some of those voicemails on this podcast episode today as well don't forget sharing is caring for our friends watching live hit that share button share to your story share with a friend and comment back je suis pray we'll know you shared it and um whether you're sharing live or in in the future we appreciate sharing with friends. It doesn't matter when you do it, as long as you you go back to the future and and, and share. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, mom, are you ready okay. to get into this yes, episode? I am. Let's do it. Let's release the hounds, if you will. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Kicking things off first, we had a lot of chatter on the Book of Face, Facebook. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go let our dog out because she is upset with us okay. right now. Hold on one All sec. Right. So no take worries. it away, Mom. Sure. Okay. So uh, checking in on Facebook, we have Jen. How do we say that? Jen App? I'm going to say that. Hopefully that's how I pronounce it, Jen. If not, I apologies. Jen wrote in saying that this announcement doesn't matter to me as it prolongs the time we are done with Outlander content altogether. I'm here for it. And I've heard this from a lot of people, that having this long of a release date kind of announcement saying, okay, it's all the way in November, actually is making some people happy as it is dragging out the eventual goodbye that we will have to have with the Outlander <sighs> yeah. series as a whole. So there, a lot of people are saying, the longer we've got it, the better. Stretch it out, baby. Yeah. Um... I, I kind of agree with that sentiment. I might co-sign with Ooh, that sentiment. Uh, nice. Uh, only because 
like I'm not insulted by the whole like oh they're they're doing it in November and it, they promised a a gigantic season and I like for season seven hmm. I, like for for some reason it just I, I kind of just want this all to keep going you know what I mean yeah you know what I mean okay so Chilly so that's bean. that all right uh the next one comes from I guess of course I need to get my notes here Kyle Ann Crawford she says exciting I know that it'll be worth the wait really looking forward to seeing these next parts of the books to come to life on screen and that to me is like a total glass half full mantra like yes it's oh okay I, I wanna I, like I want to extend the outlander content mm-hmm. but she also does this thing where it's just it, she says yeah it, that's great man like awesome I'm 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 grateful and thankful and none of the none of the vitriol <laughs> really that um much of the fandom is is saying uh, and really no cynicism of what I was saying last episode it's just kind of thankful and happy to 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 be there to be there you know, I like and, that and I, and I kind of like that I think that I, I that's like that usually lot. how I am but not now yes that's true <laughs> now I got crabby alright we got we got some voicemails you ready for this oh, hold on let me get my headphones on oh yeah you gotta get the headphones on yes okay here we go Hi, Mary and Blake. I have an Outlandish theory. Ooh. Okay. I She's a sound effect. Push buzz. Out. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're right. You're right. Here we go. We don't know who this person is. That's that's my Outlandish theory. Who is this person? Yeah, no, you see, you can't call in and then and, and not give me the name and where you're from. You, you got to do that. That That is a requirement. Uh, if you don't do that, then... I mean, we'll still play you. Well, this time, <laughs> we're, 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 it's been we a while. Rules. It's ru- been a while. There are rules for a reason. Blake? <laughs> There, there are no rules if stars is in charge okay uh, yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> there's no quality assurance no, or no. rules or so let's go communication for it. We're just or keeping in line with how stars has been professionalism or or anything really all right here we go that they were greenlit for a season eight until they were halfway through filming season seven as a consequence they thought that season seven may truly be the last season and so they broke it down and wrote it accordingly After hearing that they would get a season eight, however, I think that as they were breaking it down and writing it, they may have seen a need in post-production to make some serious editing changes to the back half of season seven. They might even have needed to make some reshoots or film new scenes for parts of season seven, which could be possible as they are currently back to work on season eight. It could explain the need for a lengthy season seven post-production. Of course, nothing of the sort has been stated officially, but I think it makes as much sense as anything else. At least, that is my outlandish theory. Mm. Again, Mary and Blake, thanks for all that you do. Love the show. And looking forward to season seven whenever we get it. (laughs) She was like a little, she's like, do I say seven? Do I say eight? Is it seven B? Whatever we get. Whatever it is. I love it. it, Let's just be thankful (laughs) for it. I kind of like this take too, where it's perhaps they thought it was the end uh, of the, of the series. Mm -hmm. Yes. To me, naturally they would write it towards it being the end of the series and probably shoot it that way. And when that doesn't occur, then you have this instance where it's like, okay, we need to, we we need to revamp this whole thing, um, and doing that with reshoots and putting it in the editing bay. I mean, the the the, the editing bay is where the magic happens. Yeah, that's you know you can have half of your story, but it ain't a full story until it gets into the bay, and that's why it's so imperative for someone like Matt Roberts or whoever your showrunners are to be in the in the bay. But a lot of it was already edited, and I think that that's where the question is. And if we can get transparency eventually in the future, was it already el- all edited? Was it canned? Was it ready to go? And then they were like, never mind. We're adding stuff. Yeah. We're changing things. Because I think that conversations had been had in different forms not not tons and of course not like on their official social media outlets um but there definitely has been chatter that 
things were set and done. But that's why I'm saying that I would love to hear eventually some clarity that, oh, yeah, it was done. It was edited. But then we changed our minds. Or, yes, season eight came into play. Or we decided to add in, like you were saying, Blake, yeah. we decided to add in some extra scenes and add in some different cast and do some different things to tease the blood of my blood. I love it. One day I hope we do get to find <laughs> out. <laughs> what what went wrong? What changed? But part of me wonders, though, right, if... If like, if it was, if they did write season seven to be the end and then all of a sudden they were like, oh, no, no, season, season eight is going to be the end. That would have changed, right? Like that would have changed before they started or at least during when they were filming, right? Mm -hmm. Like that would have been, so th that's why I kind of don't buy, like, I, I'm not sure if I co-sign on the take only because they know when their show is going to end and when they go into production, they know that it's like th that it's going to be what it's going to be like. They know because if they don't, then how are they making the show? You know what I mean? Jelly bean. Uh, <laughs> how do they know? Oh, how do they know? Cause they're making the show. Okay. Yes, Blake. Next. How to tell when the hosts aren't it. listening. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's okay. It's no problem. It's you no just problem. you seem like you don't think that changes can be made is what I'm getting. No, no, no. I think that changes can be made, but what I'm saying is I'm not sure if I buy the take that that changes were made. That no, that they went into it thinking, Oh, this is our last season when they started filming, and then they were like, Nope, never mind. We're just gonna we're just gonna change this now. Like no, they they went into it knowing that it was not going to be their final season. They may have written it not knowing that it was their final season, or thinking that it was rather. Uh, but that can be easily changed. I mean, uh, scripts change all the time, right? That that it, it's it's. I don't think it's relevant. I just don't get your opinion where you're like, oh, I don't. I think they knew it wasn't their last season, but they could have written it that way. Yeah, like why when they would originally... you write it that way if if you knew something? So I I love I love the options that you're keeping open. I guess you're just confusing me. No, I guess what I'm saying is when they ideated and when they broke season seven, they may have been writing it towards, oh, this might be our last season, and then I'm going as they're writing it, I'm going to allow for the fact that maybe they got renewed for season eight. Like I'll allow for that. I'm I'm of the opinion. But when that they go into production, they know that season seven's not their last season. Okay, I'm going of the opinion that everything was done. That's where I'm at right now. I don't think they had to go back and fix anything. I think that this is literally just business. This is business being business. This is people. <laughs> saying where do we want it to make the most bang for our buck? Yeah. Another thing that was brought up, our dear friend Ann Gavin, who lives in Scotland. Um, she's a beloved member of our Outlander cast family, a, a wonderful, kind and generous patron at jointhenerdclan.com. She she, as I said, she lives in Scotland, and we heard this from several of our friends in the UK. Currently, there is no way to see Outlander in the UK. Mm -hmm. That Lionsgate situation yeah, the Lionsgate is, Plus was is shut down. done yes, okay shut so down. so Anne wondered and I'd love to have friends in the UK also weigh in on this is potentially could some of the holdup be that they want to have more time and flexibility in a way to actually show the show that takes place in the UK <laughs> that a lot of the fans who watch the show are based in there too do they want to wait and give a little bit more time so that there could be an avenue for this show to be streamed there mm. without people having to go about it illegally because let's be real us Outlander fans we are crafty we are devoted and we're going to find out a flipping way to watch this show if you don't put it in our country. So could some of, you know, could a lot of these elements be brought in together? But knowing that if we had a spring drop date as of right now that we know of, there would not be a way for the friends in the UK to actually watch this show that's legally. That's fair. I would say that is putting a lot of emphasis on one show that probably doesn't garner that kind of emphasis anymore uh meaning they have more popular shows that are more uh germane and um part of the zeitgeist mm -hmm. than outlander right uh and and for them to and that, for them to delay a prime show because they can't get it on Lionsgate Plus, 
for international customers. I I'm not sure if I would buy that. I mean, there I think there's I think there's enough reasoning for someone who loves the show to say that, but as a business on the whole, I don't think that would contribute to it. My sense is they had a whole does bunch Jeffrey of, Hirsch think there's enough premium women in the UK? No, That's the de- question. he definitely does not. <laughs> he <laughs> absolutely. Oh, hey, there ain't brownie. no premium women over there. I'll she tell you brownie. that. Oh. They're all here in the United States. That's all we're worried Let's about. Let's listen to the next voicemail. Okay. We don't need more Jeffrey on this episode. <laughs> Mary Blake. <gasps> it's that bloke from Chigsbury in the Just UK. Hey, Pete's here. Hi, Pete. Now, do I have any thoughts about the release window? But Outlander 7B. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Well, it'll be November, not a few months earlier. So let me see. I'll be even more forgetful than I am now. Oh. I mean, you're listening to the guy who recently spent half a day turning his house upside down, looking for his glasses, <laughs> only to find them resting on top of his head. No. About 60 inches more rain will have fallen in Tewkesbury as opposed to the extra one hour of sunshine. <laughs> About a billion and one more meaningless TikTok videos will have been released, <laughs> mostly by people who are prime candidates for the Darwin Awards. Claire will be so Sassanac wasted, she'll have agreed to marry Lord John. <laughs> They'll have a family of three little Lord Johns, all with broomsticks for Christmas. <laughs> Seriously, though, if we're all still here in the land of the living come November, then I don't think we can grumble. I'll catch up with you both in November. Aww. Until then, you look after yourselves, hey? Oh now, gosh, where did I leave sweet. my glasses? <laughs> Emily, Holly, have you seen my glasses anywhere? <laughs> oh, man, this is what I love, Pete. Me Pete's too. the best. He Hall really of Fame caller, Pete. That's Pete all from we Tuxbury. need. End. End of podcast. I know. That's the end. Hey, see you later. Pete's- all right, everybody. Time to go. Oh, my gosh, Pete. Thank you for calling in and bringing... <laughs> <laughs> and giving us some merriment as a fellow glasses wearer my friend you are not alone in that predicament so many of us have gone through that of where are these glasses blake's had to blake's had to answer me on your head mary yeah i know it's it's right there sometimes i'm even actually wearing them like on my <laughs> eyes <laughs> you're looking through them yes. he's like you can see so let's think about this oh, uh thank you man. pete all right, so uh, I've got a comment here from Kathleen on Facebook. She says, I thought they would do all of the books, Aww. and it seems like they end before book 10 since it has not been written yet. So I'm curious how they will end it in season eight. The reason why I wanted to bring this conversation up, or yes, at least sir. this comment up, is because Mary and I actually con- conversed about this very notion. Did we do it while I was in my sleep? Probably. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, when did we have this conversation? Um we did that, uh, I would say, about a week ago we talked okay. about it. And my assertion about this, the ending, is screw it. Do your own ending. Who cares what Diana writes? Do yours. Matt Roberts should do his own ending. That way, it's his, it, it's, like, it's his piece of art, right? And it can be compared to Diana's and great, and maybe people will be pissed off about it, but it, it's his show, it's his work, let me end it the way that I want to end it. You know what's it. just so interesting to me about this predicament is that Diana has come out, and she really doesn't like fan fiction, she doesn't like canonical fiction that other people are writing. Sure. But you're right, Matt Roberts' team is essentially going to have, I mean, they've already they've already swayed, they've done things that haven't been done in the books, Murtaugh, prime example. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, she's given this blessing and she's let them have this show. But it'll be very interesting. I agree. Because obviously, book 10 has not <laughs> been released. It's not yeah. been written. Um, so either they're going to need to have a lot of inside talks with Diana. And she's going to have to be very comfortable with them giving spoilers away that go in line with her book or you're right she's gonna have to give this blessing where she's like here's a couple of things which we know she's given a couple of things like sure like she's but she's either gonna have to say here are the key points but other than that have fun improv you know jazz is cool um so i don't know and those are gonna be very fun conversations that obviously they've already had and um 
but it's not going to be the same. No. So for those of you who don't know, like exactly there, there's going to be 10 books and there are not 10 seasons and they are not covering. They haven't even covered everything inside the books that they've covered right now on the show. Mm. They've had to leave a lot of stuff out. And so it will be a different experience. And this is why I love to suggest to people that if you love the un- the Outlander universe, delve yeah. into the books, yeah. delve into the books, because it's a whole new world, sparkling, shimmering, splendid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I... I, that's another kind of bit of conversations that as we get press tours, you know, coming to season eight, not even just seven bay, but coming to season eight, I think that that those will be really interesting conversations for us to hear from the team of Matt, Merrill and Diana. Uh, Michelle here on Facebook says, I get that they had to find a home for the show in the UK after Lionsgate debacle before they can announce anything. However, it is very frustrating that the time between the two halves of the same season that has been this far apart. The fact that the episodes have been sitting in limbo, ready to view for this long, is maddening. That's just because I can't wait to see it and what's mm. in the episodes. And as a book reader, I know it's going to be so good. Uh, I can see that, too. As a book reader, when you're looking forward to something, you know the quality that is coming, at least what you would anticipate to be coming. You're seeing this thing, and for all intents and purposes, it is done, let's just say. And then for it to just not be coming out it i could see how that'd be frustrating for some people i get it i absolutely i I do get it i think what is really hard too i was talking about this with another friend of ours who was a fervent fan for the initial four seasons even fifth season you know then we of course had the obvious issues of, of covid um katrina obviously also got pregnant and sure. you know so there were different things that kind of made what I'm going to call like the middle of the sandwich of Outlander, uh, a little tricky. And what was so exciting about season 7A was Outlander was back. Outlander's magic. We also got Scotland. But just the pacing and the excitement. We had, we've had we had fans reach out to us of the show who said, you know, there were times in seasons four, five, six where – I wasn't thrilled. It wasn't captivating me the way Mm. that it used to in the earlier seasons. But this season, season 7A, did just that. You know, people were pumped. People, like, there's going to be people who are pumped no matter what, okay? But there was also a demographic in the Outlander fandom who were pumped in the beginning. And then these past several seasons previous to season 7, this past few, were less than pumped. And with this season, it reignited a lot of those people. And... I think that that to me is one of the saddest things is that I I loved season 7A. I loved the momentum that we were getting. We did leave on such an epic cliffhanger. We we had the magic of time travel come on back to the show. We had Scotland come back to the show and it's like all of these people who are who are resuscitated <laughs> in some ways now have this giant to uh to yeah. wait. So it just makes me sad because I feel like it took season seven for a few, uh, not a few, but a, a, a demographic of this fandom to get excited again. And um, and I, I'm sad that there's such a long delay as I don't, I, I just, I want I want it to keep going. I want that form of momentum to I, keep going would, for everyone. I would say that season six was what it was. Uh, and everybody can blame COVID or Katrina getting pregnant, whatever, like it. We don't think we want to blame her for getting pregnant. Oh, no, I, like, that's sorry, so exciting, I don't. We, want to, we just know that it was a disjointed yeah. season and, for for reasons right. known. Yes. I, I blame blame is is a I, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like everyone can understand. Put, everyone can put or they can ascribe, you know, uh, uh, some sort of reasoning. Yeah. Right. Fine. Uh, to to leave season six the way that it was was problematic. But season seven A, I think, was definitely a warm salve, if yes. you will, uh, from kind of washing away season six, yes. um, especially coming after season five, which to me was one of its better seasons. So, you know, probably since season two, you know, or or uh, maybe even the f- front half of season three. Um, season five was was such a a, a, a high watermark uh, in many ways. Um, so it I think a lot of people really love I mean from what the from the fandom that I see uh, and I again I'm not like super like involved 
<laughs> I mean, we have a podcast about it. No, but like you're you're not a book reader, so honestly, you're cut off from a large portion yeah. of the chatter on purpose to yes. see to save your precious little mind. So from what I see, I think people are <laughs> excited for it, but there 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 is I think some sentiment from what I see here right Carol B. She writes in, "I'm over it all." Stars, the show, I've lost interest. I've canceled my Stars subscription. I wish they'd go ahead and just cancel season eight. Season eight oh my gosh, So everyone Carol. can just move on. Uh, at the time she wrote this, she put, they haven't even started filming yet. I will be in the old folks' home before it comes out. <laughs> I oh, am Carol. done. So again, we've gone from, yay, we, Grateful we, we for got anything. it. We got yes. it, we got it. And now it's like, no, cancel season eight, we're done. <laughs> Mary. Are you? <laughs> that's someone who's had, that's that's the kind of person who I'm saying has had their heart broken, yes. has been excited and let down, and I think I'd be interested to know if Carol B was a show watcher or also a book reader because that's what I'm saying. Like I feel like a lot of the people who are show watchers, um, they're like, "Come on, land the plane!" Yeah, like what are we doing here? So I can I can appreciate it, but I I'm grateful for Carol B's. Comment because as we said in the beginning of this podcast episode, the range of feelings oh, about wide. this announcement. Like I said, as wide take, as can be. Take what you think exists and then double it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um Liz Naylor here on Facebook says, as much as I love watching Outlander in the fall, Stas made a big mistake. Huge <laughs> disservice to the Outlander fan base with their lack of attention and effort in releasing the news of the 7B season release. I wonder what Outlander would have been like and the changes that would have been made if HBO initially picked this show. Marvin, I love this question. I love this question because let's get weird. Let's get weird, man. And let's let's just say, for the sake of argument, that HBO gave the green light to Outlander yeah. instead of Stars. Yeah. Uh, what is the world of Outlander at that point, and do they make this kind of mistake? No, HBO would not have made this mistake. HBO would have taken a page out of Taylor Swift's book of dropping little Easter eggs and nuggets. HBO would have known the days that time traveling can be done and would have given us little fun bits, even if it's just like, let's travel to the past and revisit something. HBO would have given us another nice Yule log <laughs> okay to spend Christmas with <laughs> HBO would have handled this in a way that we felt that we were seen and heard and even if it had the same length of time yeah. I feel like we would have been cared for and communicated with that's that's what it is cared for and communicated with once again there are things that we cannot control business is business which sucks but at least communicating this and making us still feel like they value this lovely show that we care about that so many people have put blood sweat and tears into like do it justice please yeah um kindic adria says here's my feelings it's a show we don't want it to end anyhow this will delay that go out and enjoy the world enjoy the summer It'll be here before you know it, and it's no big deal. Read the books. That'll keep you busy. Hmm. You know, I kind of don't like when somebody says, read the books. Blake, I've just said it three times. I know. I know. I know. But it's like, no, I don't want to read the books. I choose not to. Okay. Don't tell me, go read the books. Stop. Stop. Here's the thing. You're not complaining, okay? You're not here like, oh my God, I need my Outlander binky. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't survive. I need my binky every day. Okay, that's not Fair. you. All right? Fair. You've got a lot going on. You're doing knee-jerk reactions to Shogun. You're going to be covering the Tobias Menzies show. Yep. Watched the first you're, episode last night. Yeah, so you're busy. You're satiated. Yep. Okay? Okay. Sorry, my chair just like broke. <laughs> I think uh, the comment is more about... Those of you who are saying, I need more Outlander in my life on a daily basis, or at least a weekly basis to be looking forward to, I think that's who they're writing to. No, no, I, I agree. I just So I, for you to be like, I don't want anyone telling me to read the books. First off, you have been reading the books, Blake. So but you know what I mean. Facts. You know what I mean. Facts. <laughs> okay. I, so, I read the so, first three no, books. Yes, and you're about to read the fourth when we well, hit our patron goal. I know, so, we gotta hit the patron Blake, goal. I know, Blake, so I'm just saying... Shut your mouth. You have been reading the books. You've been enjoying the books. You also 
don't need it as your binky. So we appreciate that, okay? Fair enough. All right, this one comes from <laughs> Courtney Stork. She said, I'm upset, but only at stars. I am not in the least upset with any of the cast or crew. They work tirelessly to bring us the series, and then stars messes it up every year. It's absurd to call this 7B when it should absolutely just be season eight. I don't know the reasoning, but in my opinion, there is nothing they could say to me to make me okay with this situation. Mary, your thoughts on just calling this season eight? Calling it what it is, man, a spade a spade. This this ain't 7B, this, this is eight. Agreed. What do you think, yeah? Agreed. Yeah. Yes, just do that. Don't hype it as a mega. They hyped it as a very big mega season. It is not, right? It is not. I agree. I agree. And and like coming off of se- coming off of season six and ending it with them riding the horses off the beach or whatever it was, and then the beginning of season seven just like wiping it all away and then being like, okay, here we are, and then having this thing. It's it's a little bit of a it's it's a little disingenuous to the fan base, in my opinion. It just it just no, I think that's it the reeks resounding, of poor show running. That's it. I think that that's the resounding echo that we're hearing from people. All of our feelings are just invalid. Okay, yeah. whether you're okay with it, whether you're happy and excited about an announcement, whether you're upset and you want to cancel stars so that they can feel it a little bit in their pocketbooks. Okay, all of us are just invalid. But I think that overall, we can sit down and say this was handled communication wise, PR wise, poorly. Yeah, And I am grateful that no matter what, even though we have these completely different feelings that we're mm-hmm. voicing and we're getting to hear in this listener feedback episode, that there is that resounding through thread. You know, we have it right here. Courtney, I am upset, but only at stars, not with the cast and the crew, not with these people. So one of the things that I think is really important for us, too, is that know that the cast and the crew want this out. Sure. They are surprised, too. They're not happy that it's taken this long. So love on them. Love on their posts. If they're involved in other works, Blake's going to be you know, covering some of it now. Love on them. Watch them. Uh, comment with them. If you write something in your stories, if you're rewatching an episode, you know, take a little screenshot and tag them in it. Make sure that they know that we as a fandom still love and appreciate them because this is nothing that they've done wrong. They already right. did their job a long time ago and sure. it's in the can. So I, I'm grateful for Courtney and the collective thought. All right, we got another voicemail here. Oh, it's going to make me restart it. Hold on one second. Here we go. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Bunny from Cincinnati. Hi, hey, Bunny. I know a lot of people are upset about this news regarding Outlander's November release date, but here's how I look at it. We only have 18 new episodes of Outlander left, and then it'll be gone for good. Unless, of course, they wind up doing a movie for book 10 sometime later. That would be interesting. But since they are starting to film season eight, which they have said they hope to conclude sometime in October, November would give the cast some time to do a press junket for 7B. Mm. Then it's going to be another long Droughtlander before we see season eight. So actually, what difference does it make when they show a 7B? The earlier they premiere it, the longer the next Droughtlander will be. They could stick Sam's The Couple Next Door in before the premiere in November. I think that would help some of us be satiated. I'm guessing Blood of My Blood will premiere sometime before Season 8, but after 7B. Regardless, I'm certainly not in a hurry for it to be over. I've loved this show for far too long to give up on it now. Thanks for all that you do. I guess I'll have to listen to all of your podcasts again to fill the void. <laughs> Love you and take care. All right, Bye. Bunny, I, I, I'm not going to stop you. I am absolutely not. <laughs> I will say, though, again, we go from cancel season eight to, yeah, I'm just going to listen to some more podcasts and we're going we're gonna to get more. Like, I love the range of responses that we're getting here. Mary, uh, Bunny did say something that I want to get your opinion on, okay. and that is, let's say... That, yeah, the 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 show kind of goes the the Deadwood route, and that is, yeah, we're gonna film our we're gonna film our show. It's gonna be 
X amount of seasons. We're going to film. Okay. And then that's the end of the show. Or even like The Last Kingdom, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're going to film the show and then we're going to do a big movie mm-hmm. to, to cap it all off. And Love maybe it. maybe that movie premieres on Lionsgate Plus, right? As, as the new business model would intend. Like kind of like, again, how your boy Jeffrey Hirsch is trying to make it the new Netflix. Don't break up his name. Um, maybe an Outlander movie would help kind of the way that the Last Kingdom movie did. I would love your thoughts on that. I would love that because first off, it would mean that we'd have more Outlander to look forward to. Um, We'll see. I would love that. I think that's fantastic. I mean, look at the excitement that fans are having with Downton Abbey having another movie pop on up. So there is still story to tell. What will be interesting, however, is how they end season eight. And if that truly concludes the story, or if there's enough within Diana's book, if that's done in a somewhat reasonable timeline (laughs) (laughs) for the cast to still be alive, um, for them to be able to pull other things from that and to create a movie from. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Um, Like, here's the scoop. I will love, if they want to throw more Outlander at us, I'm going to love it. I'm going to eat it up. I'm going to watch all of it. Yeah. Okay, so you're not going to shy me away from that. I'm. It'll just be very interesting to see how they wrap up season eight versus how Diana's stories end up. And if there's enough to still do, and if the cast and crew still want to do it, yeah. yeah, there's nothing to stop them. Yeah, and then like then you run into you you run into a couple of things, right? Like the movie does it end up just kind of being one extra long episode, right? As opposed to being a movie, that was one of the things that I think that the Last Kingdom kind of suffered from. Yes, where it was like you know, all. But it's weird to call it a movie because to me, a movie means something you could go see in a movie theater, and I know that things are different now, and you can stream movies like direct Netflix, all these things. You know, we the. Prime Video does it all the time. Yeah. But if something's regularly been a television show, I want it to be like Downton Abbey. I want to go see the movie. That's in true. In the movie theater. Yeah. I have my popcorn. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. It's it Because I agree with you, Blake. Then it does just feel like a very extended, long episode. Yeah. So... Time will tell, but it's a wonderful theory to have, of course, and something fun to to be thinking about and going yeah, over. Yeah, they, they kind of get their, their cake and eat it at the same time too, right? Because like, let's say that Matt, like I'm very much a, a you're gonna, this is going to surprise you. I'm very much a purist, Mary. And that is when you start your, you start a story as a television show, mm-hmm. you should end it as a television show. Okay. But let's get weird. Mm-hmm. I'm all about getting weird. Mm-hmm. Do your ending, Matt Roberts, in season eight, you know, in whatever capacity that might be. And then if you wanted to do a film and you could even direct it yourself uh, and have it be informed by the ending that Diana is making. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then now you're kind of somewhere with that. Did you not hear everything I just said? No, I did. I did. (laughs) <laughs> but I. <laughs> but you're digesting it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, di- right. I'm more digesting. All right. Angel Hickey here says, "Not sure if you've been following the quotes from Matt, but he said that they went into season seven with a plan A and a plan B, depending if they got season eight with a different final four episodes. They found out which path to take halfway through filming. Yes, exactly my point. They they're not going to go into the production not knowing." Oh, we don't know what to film here. Like we, we, we're just gonna kind of <laughs> we're gonna film some Let's stuff, some stuff and, up. and then we're gonna figure it. Like no, no, like the final, the final four films when they're doing all the 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 blocking Episodes. and they're doing in their episode blocks. Yeah, the, they they know. Okay, this is what we're doing. Um, again, to me that that screams a little bit of a poor show running because they should have a better idea before the season begins. No, that's, that's stars. Let's just blame everything on stars, okay? okay they just couldn't get an answer quick enough from stars. Are we going, are we doing season eight? Come on, we're writing stuff. And stars is like, I don't know. I don't know. Anne says, we should try to get Meryl on the podcast. And yes. I would love to if stars would allow access to her. So Blake will we'll try see. again I will today. try again. Uh, Mary Ann says, oh, KJR to Manhunt by Blake. Yes, hooray. Yes, I'm going to do that. Uh, and I'm going to probably write the first one today. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, let's see what else we got here. 
when we read the next. Comment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, God. All right. Uh, yeah, Hannah Jo Asma says, I may have unrealistic expectations. It better be worth the wait and written well and not cheesy. I also hope their intimacy coach will improve because I feel like the more intimate scenes have gotten just off or awkward and I can't put my finger on it. Yeah, your thoughts on that, Mary? Yeah, I mean, I hope it's worth the wait too. I I assume it's going to be well written and not cheesy. I feel like 7A was awesome. I can appreciate how some of the intimate scenes fell off for different people. Um, But maybe that just might mean that you don't like a particular couple. Um, I'm here. I hope there's more intimacy. I, I I'm here for that. Yes. And I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> it to me, they've shown that it's well-written particularly in season seven, a so season. See, I'm referring to it as a season. I feel like I'm swearing again. <laughs> Teresa strange is honestly, if they just called the new really release season, season eight, I wouldn't mind the wait as much, but for them to advertise season seven, to be a big, massive season to make up for season six, and then put a year and a half between parts one and two, it's just ridiculous. Call it what it is. Two separate seasons. I feel like they deceive their viewers. Teresa, I agree. I think if we were digesting that this was season eight coming out in November, that it would be a lot easier for us. I would have already planned my party and had a party for the end of season seven in case you don't know i'm upset because now it's just throwing my party planning ideas out the window a little bit but we're gonna figure it out we're gonna figure it out but yes i agree i think that we would have had the hurrah and the excitement and it would it feel a lot different instead it just feels super prolonged um maria Car- carini sneed says i'm beginning to be so over stars outlander waiting so long for each season or in season seven's case a full season to finish is just ridiculous we, the faithful fans, need to be respected. Ooh, I love those strong words, Maria. It also makes me wonder how they will handle season eight with this long wait. Stars is making it impossible to continue to care about any of the characters and or storyline. By the way, the announcing the prequel with all its stars is no compensation for the original. I'm pissed and of rant. You know, Maria, I think... I think that is one idea is that they thought like announcing the prequel, showing the stars, making all those casting announcements. They thought like this should appease everyone. This should make them happy enough to not notice <laughs> that we haven't made any announcements. It's out 7B. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not, we're still excited. Yeah. We love it. Um, but I hope, Maria, that you are not going to give up on Outlander as a whole. Join in the brigade where we're mad at Star's PR team. <laughs> but um, hopefully you can still keep some of your love and drive and enthusiasm for Outlander. Sometimes, you know, even just putting on Bear McCreary's beautiful soundtracks can do the trick. Doesn't suck, okay? man. Doesn't suck. It's so good. So um, I agree. I agree with the, the, the Bear McCreary comment, Mary. I, I usually I, I'll put that on in the mornings or whatever and I'll listen to it. Mm hmm. And I mean, I'm, I've been a, a, a Bear McCreary fan since BSG days, right? So it, it's just it's a it's a warm blanket, yes. to put that out, put to put that over you. But it does kind of give me that feeling of being like, oh, that's what Outlander Blake is. Like that's what that is. I can I can go get, back to that space. When you get mad, you think about Jeffrey. Just put on a little bear flare. <laughs> okay, Je- Jeffrey Hirsch. Jeffrey, what a a grade A tool, non premium man. Just a a, a, a power it's no, not tool. Not grade A. We're just gonna call him because you know it's like premium cuts. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. Call him, call him a grade B cut. <laughs> grade B. A cut. Bre- grade B cut of man meat. Just <laughs> a shimmering, shining toolbox, Jeffrey Hirsch. You clown. I would love to have that guy on. Nope. Not he not won't. to like not to like. I mean, I would badger him a little bit, but just to have him answer and and be accountable. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, Blake from Rhode Island. It's not going to happen. Oh, all right. This one comes from Jay. She says, it's as if they fired their social media manager and asked AI to develop the announcement. No. It's abysmal. AI would have done a much better yeah, job. that's true. <laughs> AI would have done a better job, would have made a little video, would have made it magical. Okay, no. Yeah. AI could have done this. They should have typed in, how do we <laughs> properly tease 
Outlander season seven B in an exciting way. Yeah. <laughs> oh All right. Um, Angela Hickey uh, comments: The only reason we got the whisper announcement of seven B on Thursday is because they couldn't release today's package without doing that first. And of course, we agreed. talked about that in the beginning of this podcast episode. While like thirty minutes before recording, they dropped. Um, some social media stuff that we'll talk about in a little bit about season eight beginning its production. So, yep. yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> they, can't, they can't do one more thing, Outlander, without satiating the fans a little bit. Yeah, like, okay, you got this thing. It's ready to go. Sure, awesome. Then do the right thing and do something else for 7B. Oh, well, don't, like, don't it's done. A bunch of clowns. All right, let's get to the next one. All right, I got I got The package today was cute, but I, we'll go over that. I got a few... Uh, voicemails here from Lee. She sent them to me on Instagram. Oh, interesting. Uh, because our, for some reason, she wasn't able to use our voicemail system. Okay. I checked it. It works. It's fine. But uh, just bear with me here because she was sending them, sending these in, in short okay. bursts. I'm ready, Lee. Here we go. Hey, Mary and Blake. This is Lee. Um, I listened to all of your podcast. And um, first of all, hello. Hi. Gen X is not happy that you seem to think that we don't know how to, um, you know, potentially use socials and gifts and memes and all of that to do a much better job. Like any of this fandom and those in my generation could have done a yes. hell of a lot better job with this promo than yes. stars did fair anyway i just wanted to say that but no here's my other like i agree with 99 percent of what y'all said but blake okay here's the thing all right i was in austin i heard what meryl said she talked about the fact that they were nearly done and that she was working on post-production okay fine maybe she can't do all of it but here's the other little behind the scenes from yours truly. I was in Scotland. Oh, oh hold on. Oh, it got cut off. Hold oh, on. She's like cliff she was... she's like the cliffhanger of season <laughs> seven A. <laughs> All right, hold on. We got the next one. Okay, sorry. These okay. are really short. Um, or I just messed it up. I was in to finish. I was in Scotland in September dropping my daughter off in grad school. And um on the way home, Matt D. Roberts was on my flight. Get the hell out. Glasgow. To Heathrow. Wow. Uh, pretty sure that was him. And when I kind of did a double take, his eyes got big, like, oh, dang, I've been recognized. <laughs> so you can't tell me he was not working on post production during the actor strike. I can't remember when WGA was done striking exactly. But yeah, I mean, and there, were, I remember during the strike as well, there were, um, you know, people who were members of SAG, but who had directed things. And they were able to promote stuff they had directed. They just couldn't promote stuff that they'd acted in. So, you know, Matt was acting at this point, not as a writer, but as a showrunner. And. I oh, hold on. Wait, wait just, it, it, uh, we got one more here. Hold on. One last thing. We all have streaming dollars that we have to figure out how to spend. And I think Stars has done themselves a great disservice. And yeah, I went ahead and canceled my subscription. Way to go. And I will not re-up until, you know, I can get the $1 a month deal <laughs> when Outlander airs. And so, yeah, they have, they've lost out on several months of my streaming dollar. And maybe that doesn't matter. But maybe if a whole lot of us do it, it does matter to their bottom line. And this just isn't how you treat your customers. And quite frankly, I watch more HBO. So maybe I'll go re-up my HBO and watch House of the Dragons. Because at this point, um, Stars does not treat their customer base well. So anyway, that's my two cents worth. Sorry to spam you guys, but your website wouldn't let me record a voice message. Thanks. Well, you know what, uh, uh, Lee, I appreciate the fact that for some reason there must have been some technical difficulty, so you can spam us all that you want. Uh, I, the other thing that I want to say is, yes, go watch HBO. Uh, go give dollars to a company that does value your entertainment and does value your eyeballs, right? Because really what it comes down to, Mary, and I love that Lee made this point, they're not, they're not treating their customers right. Uh, regardless of the business, regardless of what Stars you want to think about the showrunners or the show itself, or what, what it comes down to is there's a company, there's a product, and there's a consumer. And ultimately, 
the company is withholding their product to the consumer's detriment. Not because of, uh, uh, for, you know, for all reasoning I mean, uh, aside, I mean, with, uh, unless there's something that we as a collective don't know, which I'm happy to, uh, I'm, I'm happy to like admit that there's probably some stuff that is going on that we don't know. Like what? I don't know. But that from they're aliens. <laughs> but from what we do know, they are withholding their product and it's upsetting their consumer. The consumer has every right to be upset. And they're not treating their customer right. Like it's a bad business move. To me, it is. But I get it if they don't care. I get it if they don't You don't appreciate that they don't care, but you're just acknowledging that maybe Jeffrey Hirsch doesn't care. I mean, I think he cares to the extent that he wants to have good top line sales. Yeah. But when it comes to customer satisfaction and uh investing in 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 the viewership base that helped make your channel what it is, mm-hmm. no, I don't think he does. What do you think about this Matt Roberts idea? And of course Lee was at Austin and got to hear Merrill. Um and we've had, you know, a few people remark upon Merrill saying that as well. What do you think about Matt being on this little flight from Heathrow to Edinburgh? Was well, it, where did he go? Where did she say? Heathrow? I can't remember where, okay. but she he she yeah. was in Scotland. Yes. Okay. So whatever. So I imagine he's either going to Scotland or coming back from Scotland, one or the other. And you can't tell me that he isn't working on the That's show. That's what she just said. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm saying I'm so reiterating. You're off. Yeah. Um, I'm reiterating it. The the WGA strike Lee's ended. Lee's live. Lee's live. Hi, Lee. <laughs> uh, the WG, uh, WGA strike ended in late September. Glasgow. Thank you. So I don't know when she was traveling to and fro. I will say this. If he was working on the show. During the strike? During the strike. Uh-huh. That's bad news, Bears. Well, listen. To each their own, Okay. No, 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 not to each. He's part of the Writers <laughs> Guild of America. Okay, it is. They're, that's a really big deal. Okay. <laughs> they, well, we don't want to tell on him, okay? We don't want to tell on him if it means bad <laughs> things for Outlander. Um, so, yeah, I would say that is there a chance he was working on the show? Yes, but I don't. I would be, as much as I love Outlander, I would kind of be disappointed. Lee was saying. Okay. I would be kind of disappointed if he was at that point uh, working on it. Because that was a big fight. It was a that was a, a knockdown drag out fight. Fran Drescher. between the the the, the WGA right. and the studios. So and all the Fran Drescher, so much Fran Drescher. <laughs> <laughs> she was the she was the leader of the WGA. Oh, uh, no, no, she was the, the, the she was the SAG. Yeah. She was the SAG leader. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Do we have any more comments or vase mails? Uh, let's see. We Oh, yeah, we have Blake. I don't know. I know you're into ho- Who's how. This? this is from Yogi D. On what forum? On Instagram. Yogi D. Yeah. It says, Blake, I know you're into Hollywood Operates. I would love a part of the podcast to explain why producers split a season. I honestly don't understand the logic when it seems to only infuriate the fan base. Uh, this happens quite a bit. Actually, uh, we've there was a re- there was a glut of movies that were split uh, into two halves, and it actually began with one of our favorites, that is Harry Potter. Uh, my sense of Harry was that it had to be done because the book was so big, and they wanted to tell a complete story, and I can appreciate that. Then it was done with Twilight, and it was done with The Hunger Games. Oh, and then the friggin' Hobbit turned into Hobbit. three. How do you make a, like a, a 20 page book into three freaking? It 20 pages? You know what I mean? Yes, you know I what do. I mean? Might as well be. Um, it, yeah, it, and it was all really money based. Uh, like, Peter Jackson was money based. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Uh, and I think he kind of wanted the symmetry of the Hobbit trilogy and the Lord. Trilogy in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay, but why do people do this for TV series? Sometimes so, they do it because it's an an all year long television series, and you need to take the break for the holidays. Sure, like this is like things on NBC. You know what I yeah. mean? They're going to do half of a season September through November. Take Thanksgiving through New Year's off. Maybe come back late January, even maybe February, and they'll take you through spring. And then they have a 
that's the end right. of it. Um, so that's frequently how that kind of television works. Just because when it comes to the holidays, a lot of regular primetime networks mm-hmm. have a lot of additional planning that goes in during that time frame. So they need to have that little break and it allows them time to shoot and edit. Yep. But those are massive, massive yep. series of television that we're talking about. But when it comes to this, a streaming show... Yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes. It Why is a have a break? Show. I mean, Netflix right now is doing this little funky thing that they did with The Crown. Now they're doing it with Bridgerton, where they're dropping four episodes of Bridgerton season three. Well, The Crown, and then, the crown happened because the Queen died when they were in production. And then that's they had why to stop. they split the season? Yeah, they had to stop. Oh, okay. And then, and then uh, uh, Peter Morgan had to rewrite the ending. Gotcha. Okay. So. You know, that takes time. But then Netflix was like, oh, we're on to something. Let's try it again with Bridgerton. So now they're yeah. doing that as well. And I think they're doing that for the str- for the Netflix streaming kind of perspective. Honestly, so people can digest it week by week. As podcasters, I'm pretty excited about yeah, it as too. it's going to make it easier to podcast about. When we have to podcast about a show that drops eight episodes it's in hard. one day, it is beyond exhausting for us yes. to try to keep up with it. So we're kind of grateful for that. But this isn't that. This is still a network that isn't going to drop four episodes five you know at a time they're sure. dropping one a week why did they write it in such a way that there are going to be two halves yeah so the one that i think is relatively comparable is the sopranos and that was the final season of the sopranos they didn't do it in previous seasons no the break happened in season 6 the final season um because David Chase wanted to do 20 episodes for the season mm-hmm. uh, to tell uh, to tell a complete story to to end to end the Sopranos, uh, but the the network wouldn't give it to him, so they had to. But then they had these negotiations back and forth. They had to break up the season halfway, like, what about so that David Chase times? could because that was long ago. Well, it's what not that long shows? ago. That was back in what two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Yeah, that was long ago, Blake. I know. <laughs> it's not this. that long. You, okay, ago. that was before we were married. Mowage. Okay, so <laughs> Mowage. modern times. Fair, fair. What other shows are splitting up seasons like this? <sighs> That's a good question. Mm. I don't know. If you give me a minute, I I will, I will. Because uh... how I'm feeling is that if it's an eight episode season, they just get it done with. But if the story has longer than that, Outlander's making this choice to bump it, at least with this one. But they did it with the initial season. Oh, let's see. Um... It's okay. I, I, I you know what I don't comment. I don't it, you'll it, get back to us on that. I, one. I will okay. definitely get back to you on that one. Uh, Battlestar Galactica did it. Okay. BSG did it for the final season. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, that, I mean, according to this rubric, that was too long ago for us to consider that as as an example. Do you think it's because they just want to hurry up and give us something Mad to Men satiate us while they film the rest of it? Is it just that like hurry up, let's get something out so we don't have a super duper long drought? Lander? Game of Thrones did it. Okay. That split seasons. Okay. Um, All right. Well, so uh, so what's happened? Yeah, that's part of what I think it is, is that because these pieces are so big and expensive that they have to do it or the wait would be even longer if they were to drop it all at once. Yeah. And they feel like if we can give a good chunky amount like eight, then to some people, that's an entire season. And I guess I can swallow. It's just I wish it was closer. I can uh, yeah, Eileen says, "Try being a Handmaid's Tale fan." Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's also true. I could swallow the long gap. I could swallow the announcement as long as they did it like appropriately, mm-hmm. but they didn't, and they messed it up, and I was really disappointed by that. Okay. Um, okay. On Instagram, we have Jay Z Blue. We already already did that. One. Oh, sorry. So that's it. I just remembered Yoga D. All right. That's any other voicemails, or is that it? Nope, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. That's all I got. Oh, well, good timing because we have to get ready to go get our, our little children, our little lad and lass from yes, school. That's true. All right. So, friends, if you are joining us live, don't forget you can hit that share button below. Help share this with friends uh, all over. If you're listening to this podcast in the future, thank you so very much. You can also share this with friends. Maybe you too have been having these conversations around the dinner table. Why does stars do this? Yeah. And maybe the first episode if you're nerds of like this us. reaction or not. Oh, but what we didn't do, Blake, uh, if you could pull it on up on their social media, the clip that they just dropped 
If you want to pull that up on their Facebook or Instagram, we can uh, quickly play through it. No, and no, why? Let's, I don't want to do that right now because we have to go pick up our kids. Man. I know we got a couple minutes. No, we don't. Okay, no, all we right. Don't. So here's the scoop. Right before we recorded this, Outlander stars, the two were like tagged in each other's things, but you know it stars who does all this publicity. They dropped a fun little like promotional, tra- yeah, but it's not a not necessarily a trailer of like. On set, on set, it's more like behind the scenes, like yeah. in the costume room, looking at um, the different set pieces, sitting down, looking at scripts, and just talking about how excited they are and how this has become a family. So the love and care and stuff that you would have been expecting them to be giving us all along, they did in this cute little sweet promotional bit. And um, it just feels weird because <laughs> what we had <laughs> a week ago did not feel like this. So um, hopefully that little video will satiate some of your desires for some love. And just know that our beloved cast and crew are hard at work and are getting season eight ready. All right, Marvin, you ready to close this bad boy out? I sure am. All right, let's do it. We want to thank you so much, especially our most generous patrons at jointhenerdclan.com. For as little as $2 a month, you can contribute to this Mama Pop podcast shop. A lot of podcasts are owned by giant media conglomerates yes. and dictated by by people like Jeffrey Hirsch <laughs> like Jeffrey Hirsch and so that by, guy. by people going to jointhenerdclan.com contributing as little as $2 a month you allow this mom and pop podcast shop to share our opinions freely to share your opinions freely so if this brings you joy and if the podcast that we make bring you joy please feel free to become a member there so we can continue to make this free content for listeners worldwide it truly keeps the lights on in this podcast studio it's helped us especially now more more than ever so those of you who are members of there Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for supporting our podcast. It um, it, it means very, it's very much. It's a big deal. And, and remember, too, that we do have a goal. Uh, we have to get to a certain amount of uh, members at uh, jointhenerdclan.com. And uh, if, when we hit that goal, I will do the Blake's Book Club for drums. For drums. So just know that we have a goal there, and it's to get to 1,000 members. Uh, a thousand paid members there. When As of today, happened. we're at nine thirty six. Oh, we're at nine thirty six. Yes. Okay, so we have sixty. What four more to go? Yes, that's math. Li- I don't like life math. Okay. Life math sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Never do live math on on, on a podcast. Um, yeah, we have sixty four. Whatever it is, more to go. Uh, if we get those sixty four, then I will immediately go into drums and Blake's book club. Get excited, friends. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget you could follow us on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram all by searching Mary and Blake. If you go to maryandblake.com, you could sign up for our email list. You can also find that contact us button if you ever wanted to leave a voicemail button. We're doing a ton of other podcasts. We're continuing with the Potterverse and we're going to be delving into Bridgerton as season three approaches. Very excited about that. Jennifer Swanson says she loves the Shogun KJRs. Keep that coming. You're welcome, Jennifer. And that's at jointhenerdclan.com. Jointhenerdclan.com. And trust me, it is an absolute pleasure to write that one. Oh, my God. I love that Yay. show. Well, until next time, lads and lasses, my name is Mary. My name's not Jeffrey Hirsch. Oh, and you have been listening to Atlanta. Hey, Coast. over here. Oh my God. The we premium really, woman. We really need to stop. It needs to be like a swear. <laughs> we cannot say his Jeffrey name Hirsch. or have his voice. What a tool. Oh, stop, please. Class stop. A stop. tool bag. <laughs> Power tool. Bye, friends. All right.